That was just ridiculous. An iconic finish from Mark Keane. I mean, what a way for Cork to finally end this hoodoo against Kerry that goes back all the way since their last win in the Munster semi final in 2012. They looked out of it so many times. How did Cork even get into a position where they could get a, a late goal and, <laughs> and actually steal this game? Because you're just, it leaves you fairly speechless. And I'm somebody who's. Uh, a neutral here it's Tykey Murphy Seamus Derby all rolled into one and it was incredible because Cork should have been out of this game Kerry had so many chances you go through the game and the amount of missed scores for for Kerry like they had 23 chances in normal time only converted 10 of them and then an extra time you had a couple of wides from David Clifford after he'd scored an unbelievable score and you were thinking considering what he's doing here, Morris Fitz would want to come out of retirement just to answer some of the unbelievable things he's doing and sort of show that he's still up at the same level as Clifford. But obviously that's a, just a bit of a joke, really. Like Killian's plan had come on and turned the game. He scored three points. He was like, he was absolutely brilliant. And I thought he is going to be the guy who decides this game. And it ends up being a different substitute, Mark Keane, who, unless I have the identities wrong, a couple of times I was nearly cursing him because he actually gifted away possession. But what a way, like and Luke Connolly as well, absolutely clutch. He came in and, you know, towards the, uh, in the normal time, he got a point that brought it from 10-8 back to 10-9. That was the 68 minute. And then Mark Collins put over the late free as well, which, you know, even at that stage, Cork were holding onto the ball for so long. And you were thinking, is anyone ever going to have a shot here? There's always that balance between, well, you don't want the clock to run out, so somebody has to shoot. But at the flip side, you have to be as patient as long as possible. And when Powder eventually got the ball and he was running towards the D just outside the Kerry box. He got blocked down because he obviously snatched at the shot and Kerry had loaded up that area. But he gets it and wins a free, uh, you know, off the rebound. So Cork had found their way back. And then it goes into extra time and Luke Connolly steps up again. He actually, funnily enough, missed the first shot of, the, of extra time and Kerry ended up having the next four shots, getting a couple of scores from Clifford, that unbelievable one out towards the side. Uh, then Killian, Killian Splan, he gets a score. Then Luke Connolly has that uh, free from 45 yards out right before the end of the first half of extra time. And he knocks it over. But actually, Rory Dean had won a free and it was moved up 13 metres because of a bit of mountain from Kerry, a bit of descent. And that's crucial. All these little tiny things just add up to what eventually is the massive drama at the end. Kerry go ahead again because Killian Splan, he's on fire and can't really be stopped. Like, Cork so many times just gifted the ball back to Kerry. And I think that score from Killian Splan, which was Kerry's last score in the 82nd minute, you know, and considering there's 90, including the extra time, that was uh, their last score. He had another wide. Then David Moore had a couple of crazy enough shots, I would say, that dropped well short. And uh, Michal Martin, the Taoiseach's son, he was able to, to gather possession, or certainly Kerry didn't regather it after he uh, made interventions. And then Luke Connolly with another clutch free out on the left flank. You know, nice for a right footer, but still unbelievable pressure. Probably 35 yards out on the sideline, so probably as the crow flies, it's still not far off of 45 anyway. And he knocks that over after Mark Collins had been fouled. So you're just thinking Luke Connolly is unbelievably clutch, but can they get the ball up and get an equalising score? And they're holding on to the ball for two or three minutes. And again, just like the end of normal time, you're thinking, can they actually get work this into a scoring position and uh, level it and take it to penalties? Because you're thinking, what an unbelievable way to finish this game would be to have penalties. Luke Connolly takes a shot. And I think anyone who's Cork, and again, I'm neutral, but you know, at the same time, you're kind of rooting for the underdog. And you're going like this, head in your hands. And you're thinking, he's missed a chance. Drops to somehow, drops to Mark Keane. And he finishes it brilliantly. But um, this is probably the first time that all the Kerry um, pundits were actually predicting Kerry. Thinking they'd win by four or five. Gooch even said it beforehand. I had Darren Sullivan on during the week and he he was uh, fairly soothed by the Kerry performances during the league. And they picked up the league title only just, just there a couple of weeks ago. And you're thinking, this is all set up for the Dublin Kerry All-Ireland down the line. But now it's going to be Cork against Tipperary in a week's time. And you were thinking Kerry just had to beat two Division Three teams in, in Cork. And then obviously Cork are better than a Division Three team. But even so, they're a Division Three team. And then Tipperary who will wait and obviously had their own massive drama as well Saturday against Limerick, which was incredible stuff. And Joe, you know I mean, there's, there's heroes on all sides. And I know it's not like Connor Sweeney's unbelievable point, the banana kick from the sideline was the last score of the game. 
but it's the most iconic score of the game and that kept them alive in the championship. Um, there's just so much about this crazy game to talk about. Um, should Cork have any more championship games for the rest of the year while it's going to be a winter championship because the Tipperary against Limerick game was an absolute crazy washout last week. So was this game as well. And like the drama was still absolutely massive because it was a, a tight game. But you wonder, geez, is, is there going to be a rethink about having them anywhere over and sort of heading west coast or on the coastline as, as it is down towards Cork as it was in Bally Buffet? So, um, yeah, absolutely crazy and unbelievable for Cork. Um, they finally get across the line, uh, certainly against Kerry. But uh, it's not a done thing because uh, Tipperary are next up and Tipperary don't like lying down either. So, yeah, huge drama. Absolute huge drama. Let me know your thoughts, what you think turned it. And uh, like even David Clifford's goal chance, the one he had in the, was it in the, um, well, the two goal chances that Cork had or Kerry had during the game. The Brian O'Bugley one. And then also when, um, when what's his name, David Clifford went for the top corner and just clipped on the outside of the post. Normally they go in. We saw what he did for for um, for uh, East Kerry in the club championship as well. Buried that one from more or less between the 14 and the 21 into the top corner. And it, because it's David Clifford, you have no problem with him going for the shot as well. If that goes in, you know, maybe it becomes something of an insurmountable lead. That, But uh, it didn't. And Cork did it. And congrats and fair play to them. What a championship it's setting up to be.